What do we have? Okay. Uh, don't round it. 79515. Does that sound right? It should end with a 5. 5 times 3 ends with 5 times 9 ends with 5. Okay. Is that what everybody gets? Now, what does that mean? That means that's what we're paying for it. That's the rate we're paying for it. Take this point 79515, which is still in your display, and multiply it times the list price of 400, and we should get this 31806. We call this five digit number, it's not always five digits, but we call the product of the complements of the, tra of the chain discount amounts, we call this thing the net price equivalent rate. Net price equivalent rate. In other words, that's the same as saying, after all is said and done, we're going to pay about 79.5% for this item. That's our net price rate. Well, what if we wanted to find out how much we're saving? If we're spending 79.5%, how would we find out how much we're saving rate-wise? Subtract it from 100%, right? In other words, if, if we're spending 80%, how much are we saving? 100 minus 80. This is not exactly 80%. Notice this is a decimal, though. How do we write 100% as a decimal? 100% as a decimal is just the whole number one, isn't it? So if we take one minus that net price equivalent rate, that'll tell us how much we're saving. So take this number, subtract it from one, or actually you could just say minus one equals, and you'll get the right answer with a minus sign in front of it. Does that look right? What do we call this? We call this the single equivalent discount rate. The single equivalent discount rate. What that means is this. Instead of telling us 1075 chain discount, they could have said, we'll give you a 20.485% trade discount. They could have said that if all their customers got all three of those. Okay? This chain discount is exactly the same as saying a single discount of this much. So they call it the single equivalent discount rate. Now, notice that 10 plus 7 plus 5 is how much? 22. Did we actually save 22 percent? No. Why not? Ah, yes. Look at the uh, summary page there. Notice in the middle column it says successively lower base. In other words, this 10 percent was taken off $400. But this 7% was not taken off $400. It was taken off a smaller base. And then this 5% was taken off an even smaller base. All right? Now, again, nobody in the industry is trying to fool anybody else into thinking they're getting a 22% discount. Everybody knows how this works. But just realize, if you're seeing this for the first time, that a 1075 is not the same as a 22% discount. All right, it's the same as this much of a discount. Now, one other interesting fact. Here are the same numbers in a different order. Intuitively, we might think, in other words, when we think of things that have a position, a placeholder, if I say, here are three digits Arrange them in any order you want, and I'll give you that many dollars. If you wanted to get the most money, how would you arrange those digits? 743, wouldn't you? If I said now, I've just given you $743, 
Now arrange them in any order you want and you're going to have to give me back that much money. How would you arrange them? Three, four, seven. Okay. So you would think, you might think, I thought when I first saw this, that this would be a better discount because you're taking the biggest number off the biggest amount. Seems like this would be a bigger discount than that. But as it turns out, how do we figure these? We take the complements, we subtract each of these percents from 100, express it as a decimal, and you might remember somewhere in your distant past there was a property of multiplication called the commutative property that says you can multiply things in any order you want and you get the same answer. Three times four is the same as four times three. So these three numbers multiplied together in any order are going to give us the same answer, which is kind of a surprising fact. <laughs>